Web advertisements are more than just ugly or a nuisance. They can even be a security risk. There's been examples of web advertisers being compromised and the advertisements they deliver to us as consumers and browsers of the internet are then compromised and then we're compromised. So they could be a security risk in the form of malvertising it's called and they can also just reduce our network performance because at any given time, a significant fraction of our internet browsing traffic is just ads being served to us. So if we could find a way to block those ads, we can improve our security, we can improve the performance of our network and in general, just make websites look a little better because there's less noise going on. So one great tool for blocking ads at a network level, as opposed to on a computer by computer basis, is to use Pi-hole. So with Pi-hole, what it does is it filters DNS requests. So a DNS request is kind of like a looking up a phone number in a phone book. Uh, when you look up a phone number in a phone book, you look for someone's name and then you get the associated number so you can call them. Well, with DNS, we look up a IP address in a phone book, in the DNS phone book. So we, when we enter google.com, we reach out to DNS and an IP address is returned to us that we can use to actually communicate with their servers. So what Pi-hole does is it sits in the middle of that process and it intercepts DNS requests to domains or sites that deliver advertisements. And when it sees those, it just blocks them. So we no longer can get the IP address of servers that deliver ads. And because of that, we no longer see ads. So it's a great tool and we can deploy it as a little virtual machine on our network, point all our computers at it, and then none of those computers will get ads anymore, or at least they're significantly reduced. So the process of installing it is actually really straightforward. First thing you need to do is either get a Raspberry Pi, which is a little tiny computer, or even just a virtual machine. So if you have VMware Player or VirtualBox, just go ahead and install Ubuntu on it, go through the installation process and sign in. That's where we're at right now. So we're currently in Ubuntu, uh, just the, the command line interface, and to install Pi-hole, it's a one-liner. So you have the option, there's other ways to install it as well, but you could just do curl dash lowercase s capital S capital L HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash install dot pi dash hole dot net and then use the vertical pipe operator. So that is, you can get that by pressing shift and it's right above your enter key. Uh, vertical pipe operator is going to redirect what we pull down from the internet into, in this case, bash. So vertical pipe operator bash. And what this does is it downloads a script to install Pi-hole and then it runs it. So the first thing it will do once it's managed to download it, and it takes a few seconds, is it'll ask us for credentials. So we need to enter the credentials that we set up when we installed the Ubuntu system. So in this case, my password is Pi-hole. Press enter, and now it begins the installation process. So this is for the most part pretty hands-off, but there's a few times that you have to interact with it to do the configurations. So we will quickly go through this installation process and then I'll show you how to access the web management console. And then after that, we will look at how we can point all the computers in our network at this Pi-hole server so that they no longer get ads. All right, so it says, this installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker, which is true. Click enter, click enter, click enter. Uh, you do want to make sure that you have a static IP address, so you may have to Google how to configure that depending on how comfortable you are with Linux. But you want to make sure that your DNS server isn't changing IP addresses over time because all your computers need to know how to reach the DNS server uh, so that they can turn domain names into IP addresses. Or in the case of Pi-hole, not turn certain domain names into IP addresses. So the first thing we have to do is tell Pi-hole what public DNS servers we want to use. Because Pi-hole is going to make DNS requests on our behalf. When we try to go to google.com uh, to resolve that into an IP address, the Pi-hole, we will send that request to the Pi-hole and it will forward it along to one of these DNS providers. And in this case, we are going to use Cloudflare, which is a pretty high performance one. Press enter. We can select the block list that we want to use. These are the lists of domains that are blocked by Pi-hole. I'm just gonna leave them all selected and we'll click OK. We're going to use this for both IPv4 and IPv6. 
And it will tell us the current network settings. Good, good. And we'll click yes, click OK. Uh, do you want to install the web admin interface? Yes. All right, do you want to install the web server? Yes. Do you want to log queries? Probably. And you can also specify the privacy mode or how much information it's actually recording. So when we'll see, when we get to the administrative console, you'll see that it records a lot of information about requests, block requests, the domains that were attempted, that we attempted to open or successfully opened, and also the computers that made those requests. So there can be some privacy implications there and you can uh, adjust the privacy settings as necessary. But I'm just gonna leave it at show everything, click okay. And now it's just gonna go through the installation process. So I've actually got this fully installed. So what I'll do is actually switch to a snapshot of this once it's fully installed. So we're gonna use snapshot two installed, click yes. And now we're just switching over to the exact same machine. It's just a little bit in the future because I've already sort of pre-installed this in, taking a snapshot of it. All right, and this is what it'll look like once the installation is done. It'll tell you the IP address to access the Pi Hole on, and it also tells you what the password is to access the administrative console. So all you have to do is go over to your browser, type in the IP address, which in this case is 192.168.164.1. Four dot one three eight, and then it's forward slash admin to get to the administrative console. Press enter, and if we kind of expand this out, looks like. Uh, whoop. Let me do this a little better here. Actually, let's just make this full screen. That works. So now we see this, and it'll give us a little bit of information about the number of DNS queries, the numbers that were blocked, the percentage that were blocked, and the total number of domains that are blocked according to the lists that we incorporated. So you might wanna log in at this point, and then you have to provide the password, which in this case is P-V-O-Y. Oh boy, all right, let's do this. P-V, I think it's a, an O as opposed to a zero, P-V-O-Y. Uh, Z6VH. Oh, and I managed to type it correctly the first time. That's uncommon. So once you've logged in, you get more information. You'll see the type of requests, like whether they were requests for regular domain names or services or, or other types of requests. So it tells you the types of DNS queries. There's a variety of those. Uh, the, it tells you what answered those queries. So 1.1.1.1 is the Cloudflare DNS provider we configured. And then cache is the local cache of DNS address to IP address bindings. So we keep a local cache to improve performance. And then there's also the block list. When that answers a query, essentially we don't answer it. We do not provide the correct IP address. And because of that, we no longer get ads. So it'll tell you things about the domains, the, the most accessed or most permitted domains. And you can even, once you've been using this for a bit, uh, get percentages about, again, how much is blocked. And you can drill down into long-term data with some fancy graphics and you can query the log. Uh, so one thing that you may have to do uh, with this is whitelist. So you may run into circumstances where it's blocking a domain that you don't wanna block, or alternatively, it might be blocking an ad that you do wanna block, but because that ad is blocked, the website or service you're trying to access doesn't work. So an instance of that is a YouTube on Apple TV. If you block YouTube ads, then YouTube no longer functions on Apple TVs. So you may have to whitelist a certain domain. And what you would do is go into your log here, your query log, and you'd see that some domain has been blocked. Maybe it's associated with YouTube. And then you can whitelist it if it's been blocked. You click whitelist right here. This says blacklist because this was permitted. But if it's been blocked, you can whitelist that address and then it will allow that specific traffic through. So that's something you may have to do. You may run into a few websites where certain things are blocked that you wouldn't otherwise want. But you'll notice pretty quickly that your internet is a little bit snappier, that ads have been severely, drastically reduced, and you might not notice it, but your security has also been improved as well. So that's Pi Hole, and really, there's one more configuration that I don't wanna forget. You have to, we've got the server set up, but we need to tell the computers on our network to ask for IP addresses or, or to send DNS requests 
for, to the Pi hole and get IP addresses back from it. So the way to do that is to log into your router. Here's an example of a Linksys router, pretty common. And what you would do is log into the administrative console. You have to enter your IP address of the router. It might be something like 192.168.0.1 or maybe 192.168.1.1. You might need to check your documentation. But you enter the address of that router in your browser. And then you log in using the the administrative credentials, which uh, you may have configured yourself. Otherwise, you can find the defaults by Googling like Linksys default credentials. So once you've logged in, you have to make one configuration change, and that's the actual DNS address right down here. So we want to enter 192.168.164.138. I believe that is the correct IP address. And if we click Save Settings now, you might, you might even add a, a backup DNS server, like 1.1.1.1, just in case the pie hole goes down. And then if you click Save Settings, it will, well, this doesn't work because it's a simulation, but it will save the DNS settings. And then your computers will be automatically configured as time goes on to send their requests to the pie hole instead of some other DNS server that isn't blocking ads. And once the pie hole's set up, you can just set it and forget it. I've got a pie hole running on my home environment, in my home environment, that has been running nonstop for almost half a year in a little virtual machine with only 512 megabytes of RAM, which is probably itself too much for pie hole. So hopefully this is something that is useful for you and it improves your security, makes the internet a little faster for you, a little prettier for you. Really recommend playing around with it because it is a great free tool that uh, it's a great project. So thanks for joining me and I hope you I hope you have fun with this.